Welcome back class, I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide and today we will be continuing on section A of test number 2 math section and we're going to get started on number 6. So number 6 is if x represents an odd integer which of the following represents the next odd integer greater than x? So we know like stated that x is odd. Now we need to know what's the next consecutive odd integer, which is the consecutive odd integer greater than x. So what's going to go here, the next odd integer? And then they give us expressions. So the first one is x minus 1, x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3, and 2x minus 1, and a, b, c, d, and e. So what is the rule of positives and negatives? Now, you might think that this is a little dumb, but I'm just asking. So, they are plus and plus equal to a plus. A minus and a minus equal to a plus. A plus and a minus equal to a minus. So, we know that two types of the same two positives equal to a positive, two negatives equal to a positive, and a positive and a negative equal to a negative. So those look like smiley faces a little bit, but either way. So what I'm trying to say here is that when you add two numbers of the same type, like even and even, or odd and odd, you will get even on both ones. And But if you add an odd and an even, you're going to get an odd. So, from all of these answer choices, the only answer choice that follows that rule is C, which is x plus 2. An odd plus 2, which is an even, is going to be equal to an odd, and that is the next great, next odd integer greater than x, and it is the consecutive one as well, since we're only adding 2. So, that's the answer to number 6. And number 7, has a graph on it. So let's draw that. No. There we go. A little bit slanted. I'm not worried about that too much. An X and a Y. I almost drew another X there. And the origin, and there are two points here. This is P, A, and B. And this is point T. And there is nothing else there. So, in the figure above, point T is the same distance from O as point P is from O, as, o as in the origin. Which of the following could be the coordinates of point T? Well, we know that the since they're the same distance from the origin, this is the same distance as this distance. So, we know that there is going to be some similarity between the two coordinates. So, now we need to figure out, well, what is the y and x and y value of t. So let's first look at the y value. t is on the same line as p, and you don't need to assume that, but when you look at the answer choices, there are no other values but a and b, or negative a or negative b. So you know that t has to be on the same line as p. You don't need to assume anything. You can figure it out from that. So we know it's going to have the same y value whether it's negative or positive, because these are variables, they're not numbers. So it's still b. Now, you might stop here for a moment and say, wait, b? Like, if you were a little careless, you would write negative b, but that's not it, because it still has to be the same y value. If it was negative b, it would be somewhere over here, even though it sounds a bit absurd, but that's how the problem is set up. Now, if it's the same distance as the origin, and it's at the same y value, then it's going to be at an x value, which is the negative of this one. So since this is a, this has got to be negative a. And so our answer here is choice a. That's a lot of a's. So now, let's go to number 8, which says, A box contains wood beads, red glass beads, and blue glass beads. The number of glass beads is four times the number of wood beads. If one bead is to be chosen at random from the box, 
the probability that a red glass bead will be chosen is three times the probability that a blue glass bead will be chosen. If there are 12 red glass beads in the box, what is the total number of beads in the box? Well, in this problem, we need to start working backwards. So, we know that there are 12 red beads, glass beads, red glass beads. And we know the probability of picking a red glass bead is three times the probability of picking up a blue one, a blue glass bead. So, we know, therefore, that the amount of red glass beads is three times the amount of blue glass beads. So, if we divide 12 and 3, we will get four blue glass beads. Now, we're not done yet. Now, the problem also asks that the number of glass beads is four times the number of red beads. Sorry, my apologies, wood beads. So, how many glass beads are there? Well, there are the red glass beads and there are the blue glass beads. So, there are 16 glass beads. And this is four times um, the amount of wooden beads. Because it says there's four times the chance you'll pick up a glass bead than a wood bead. Bead. That's kind of turning into very repetitive cliche. But when you divide 16 by 4, you will get 4. So there are 16 glass beads and 4 wooden beads. So there are a total of 20 beads. And that's choice A. So moving on to the next problem, which is number 9, which is another graph. Let's take draw this out as well. And there might be some microphone feedback, and I'm trying to get that fixed still, so I apologize for that. And it's something like this. I, it's, it's drawn much better in the book, but anyways, which of the following graphs is the reflection of the graph above about the x-axis? So, we're looking for an answer where the graph is reflected about the x-axis. So, what is the meaning of reflection over axes, about an axis? So, let's draw another separate graph on the right-hand side of this line. No, that's a bit too horrible. There we go. Let's draw y equals x so it'll be looking it'll look something like this now if you were to reflect it about the y-axis actually no let's use a different color for demonstration if you were to reflect around the y-axis it would look like this if you were to do it around the x-axis it would still look the same so we really didn't explain anything however if we change this to maybe something a bizarre looking shape like this it would be much different it's because the other side will look like this if we were to reflect around the y-axis it would look something like this and if we were to reflect it around the x-axis let's change our color here it would look something like this. It would go down here and look like this. So according to that, we need to flip this this way. Or rather a bit that way. So our answer choice out of all of our answer choices, the only one that looks like that is B. B is the graph itself. How is the wall? Very slow explanation I gave, I apologize and it looks like this the entire thing is flipped it's turned upside down that was the word i was looking for it's turned upside down but nothing has changed not the slope not the width the height nothing no coordinates have changed either so that's what happens when you flip about the x-axis it was about the y-axis then if let's use yellow for y-axis it would look like this the same exact thing just flipped right to left so our answer choice is B. And now we'll go to number 10. Also, very slow explanation now I think about it. So, number 10 is, if x plus y squared equals to 100 and x minus y squared equals to 16, what is the value of xy? Now, 
let's write this down. So x plus y whole square, which was what I was supposed to say, is equal to 800. And x minus y whole squared is equal to 16. So in these types of problems, the first step you must and must do is you expand the equation. When you expand the equation, you get, for the first one, for instance, it's x plus y times x plus y. So you get x squared, <clears throat> then you use the FOIL method, first outside, inside, last, so plus xy, plus xy, then you could cross this off and call it 2xy, so x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. This is equal to 800. Now what if we expand this one? It's x minus y times x minus y. So it's x squared minus xy minus xy. So you cross this off and it's minus 2xy plus y squared, which equals to 16. So now we have two separate equations, x squared plus 2xy plus y squared is equal to 800. And you also have x squared minus 2xy plus y squared is equal to 16. So in this case, what we have to do is since we need to find what xy is equal to, we need to get rid of the x squared and the y squared. To do this, all we can do is we can subtract this equation from this equation. So when we subtract the entire thing, we're also flipping signs in the bottom equation, so it's going to look like this. At l so it's going to be x squared minus x squared is so 0. 2xy minus minus 2xy, which turns it into a plus, will equal 4xy. And then y squared minus y squared, this is still a negative sign, is going to be equal to 0. This will equal to... 16 will get a negative sign now, so 100 minus 16 is going to be equal to 84. So our equation simplifies out to 4xy equals to 84. And now we just need to solve the how what xy equals. So we divide both sides by 4, 4, and we get xy is equal to 21. And that's the correct answer. That's choice see. So I think that's enough for one video. I will hope that I helped you in your preparation and I hope to see you in the next video where I will try to finish up. Thank you.